Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace the carburetor diaphragm on your lawnmower with a Briggs and Stratton engine. And here's the lawnmower I'll be doing this on today. It's the Briggs engine with the carburetor attached to the fuel tank like this. And this is the plastic carburetor. And this procedure will apply to the 3.5 horsepower engines to over 4 horsepower engines as long as you have the same fuel tank and carburetor. Before I get started, I'm just going to give you some symptoms that you may experience that will let you know that you need to replace that diaphragm. Some of the symptoms you may experience is it will start and then run for like 2-3 seconds and die. And no matter how often you repeat that process by priming it or putting gas through the carburetor, it will only start and die right away. Another symptom that you may experience is that it will run continually, but it's going to sputter back and forth. And the most annoying symptom that you will get is that it's going to surge up and down. So the engine RPMs will go up and down, and that is a very annoying noise. And one of the major symptoms is that your lawnmower will not start at all. To do this job today, you're going to need a flat screwdriver, a Phillips screwdriver, a ratchet with a 3 8 socket. Sometimes you will also need a half inch socket. Today, though, I will be okay with just the 3 8 Sometimes the bolt over here will be half inch and the bolt over here 3 8 and if the fuel tank is dirty where the carburetor screws on, just use a bit of carb cleaner for that. To start with, you need to remove this screw. It will remove the air filter assembly. Next, you need to remove the 3 8 bolt over here. And you will also need to remove the bolt over here. Today it is a 3 8 When you take this bolt off, just pay attention to the spacer inside here. Depending on the year and model of your lawnmower, the spacer may be of a different size. And on some mowers, it's attached so that you don't have to worry about it falling out. Now when I remove the bolt, the spacer will come out. Just leave it there for now. Now what you want to do is grab the fuel tank like this. Pull back towards you. Just gently. And you'll notice that the throttle linkage is attached over here on the carb. So all you want to do is just hold the linkage, tilt the fuel tank like this, and it's off. Now you don't necessarily have to remove the fuel from the fuel tank to do this job, but if you suspect that the gas may be bad, then just throw it out, dry it out in the sun, and then put fresh gas once you reinstall it on the lawnmower. I'm just going to leave the fuel in the tank today because I know it's still good. Now before I do anything else, I've plugged the two holes of the carburetor. What I'm going to do now is use my air gun and blow off all the dirt from the carburetor. And make absolutely sure you're wearing your safety glasses when you use air tools. Now what you need to do is remove the five screws that are holding the carburetor onto the fuel tank. This is where you will need your Phillips screwdriver to do this. Now once all the screws are totally loosened up, just lift up the carburetor. Now when you take the carburetor off, you want to look inside over here to make sure there is no water or dirt. It doesn't look too bad right now. However, I will be cleaning this small part over here. But overall, it's not too bad. Now you can flip your carburetor upside down. You want to take notice of the position of the gasket and the diaphragm. These are actually two parts, and you want to make sure that the spring here isn't lost. It will stay in there, but sometimes it does pop off by itself, so make sure you don't lose that. You also want to make sure that the screen over here is clean. In this case, it's totally clean. And very importantly, you want to make sure that the pickup tube here is clean as well. There's a slight bit of dirt on this tube here, so I will be cleaning that. Now I'm going to show you two possible kits that you can buy to do this repair. Now this is the cheaper kit, it's just the diaphragm and the gasket. So in essence it's only these two parts over here that are stuck together right now. And there they are. And this is part number 795083. And the other kit here has the screen that goes on the carburetor right here. And this one here is part 5083. So these are your two options. If your screen's in bad shape then get this one. If it's not, then just get the other one with the gasket and diaphragm. Now these two kits here come from discountonlineparts.com. The links to where you can buy these directly from their website are under the video today. Now to clean the screen here on the pickup tube, all I'm going to do is just air blow it. 
And what I'm going to do now is hold the spring and just air blow inside the carb a bit. And now to clean the bit of dirt that's in this part, I'm going to use a shop towel with a small screwdriver and just soak it up. If this was really dirty, what you can do is use carb cleaner, let it soak, and then try to brush it out with something or pick it out. But today it's not too bad. And now I'm going to spray a bit of carb cleaner in there and repeat the process with the shot towel. Again, you don't want to get the carb cleaner on the new diaphragm because it could damage it. And now it looks nice and clean. I also use my air gun to blow out any dirt left. And now it's going to be time to replace the diaphragm and gasket. First of all though, I want to show you the old one. This one here still worked, however it's pretty wrinkled around the edges over here. It wasn't quite running right. I have seen them a lot worse though where the tabs here are bent and they will not move at all. These tabs are supposed to be nice and soft. You don't really want to see stretch marks at the edge of the gasket. Over here it's okay because the small spring puts pressure here. But if it breaks the seal on the outer parts of the carburetor, you're also going to be getting problems as well. Another sign that this gasket is no good is if it's really hard. In this case here it's not that bad, but I've seen them as to where you could not even move this. It was stuck in one position. Same with the little tabs. So now I'm going to open up the package. And now you want to grab the diaphragm and install it first on the fuel tank, just like this. And it's very easy because you're going to see that it only fits one way. All the holes will line up as well as the shape of the diaphragm to the fuel tank. And now you want to install the gasket. Again, make sure all the holes are lined up. Now before installing your carburetor, you want to make sure that the screen over here is very clean. You want to make sure that this screen here is clean. And you want to make sure that your small spring is still attached to the carburetor like this. And now what you want to do is insert the tube inside this hole here. You can hold the gasket and diaphragm when you do this. And then just bring it down. Now you want to line up the holes on the carburetor to the holes on the gasket and diaphragm and to the holes on the fuel tank. And now you can start installing the screws. And what you want to do is install the screws in a diagonal pattern so that it screws the carburetor on evenly. So what I'll be doing is just snugging this screw back here, then this one. By doing this you're going to prevent air and fuel leaks. And then just repeat the process for the rest of the carburetor. And once you have them all snug, then just repeat the process in a diagonal fashion as well. And this will be the final tightening. And I will just quickly check each screw again. Just a quick tip before I reinstall this is if you have fuel leaks over here and all around the carburetor, it could be that your carburetor is totally warped. Sometimes though by doubling up the gasket it can solve the problem, but not always. It is a plastic carburetor, that's why they warp sometimes, and the only real cure is to replace the whole carburetor. So at this point here I'm going to reinstall the fuel tank on the lawnmower. And before I reinstall that I'm just going to air blow a bit of the dirt out of here. Make sure you plug the intake hole over here. Before you reinstall the carburetor back on, make sure that the o-ring is in here and this little plastic ring as well. If it has popped out, you just put it in and pop it back in the carb. Now what you need to do is grab the linkage, put it inside the only hole on the throttle mechanism of the carburetor, just like that. Make sure that the rubber elbow here is lined up with this pipe. And then line up the carburetor intake to the intake pipe. And now what you want to do is just push in. It's going to go in about half an inch. And now you want to install the bolt over here. You may have to move the fuel tank to line up the hole. And I'm just going to leave it snug there for now. On this mower I have to go in and put the spacer. So I'm going to hold it with needle nose pliers. And I'm going to insert the bolt. And now you want to go and tighten it up with your ratchet. I don't have the tightening specs, but just use common sense. It needs to be fairly tight, but don't overdo it. And do the same back here.
And now look at the throttle mechanism, make sure it's nice and loose like this. And now you can reinstall the air filter. Again, if the filter needs to be replaced, it's a good time to do it. And now I'm going to try it out to make sure that everything works good. And that sounds good to me. Once you've ran it for a while and you stop it, you want to look around the carburetor here for leaks. In this case, I don't see any fuel leaks, so the job is good. So as you saw in my video, it wasn't hard to do. Oftentimes, that will be the problem of your lawnmower if it's got the same carburetor and diaphragm. For a small fee and by watching my video, you can do it yourself. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to follow me on Facebook, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter, and have yourselves a great day.